right, welcome to uh, our workshop on ancient Chinese paintings. And we're going to talk about different types of paintings, uh, and all of them are ancient because that's mostly what I, I know about. Now, the characteristics of the ancient Chinese paintings, they're very different than Western painting. We're Western. Um, Asian painting is very different. Um, most of the ancient Chinese paintings are scrolls and they're in, on rice paper or silk or wall hangings. And the wall hangings are usually always silk. And uh, they are ink, but they don't, they're not limited to just ink anymore. The subjects are usually nature. And they use very little color because they believe that you need to master black and white before you can go on to color. And so color is always introduced much later. And most uh, Chinese children, at least back then, I'm not sure now, um, learn how to paint as soon as they can hold a paintbrush. And so they start teaching them to use the black and white. And they have to be like in their 20s or 30s before they introduce color. So it's a long time, <laughs> I know. Which is very different than the Western world. I mean, we're all about color right away, <laughs> you know. Put it all in there. Uh, they also believe there are no mistakes. There are only acts of fate. And if you have an act of fate, you work with it because that's the natural order of things. The, uh, realism is not important. Okay? They're, they're trying to capture the mood, the atmosphere, not necessarily highly detailed, you know, so that it looks like a photograph. They, they, they don't really care about being super real. They don't even care if it looks exactly like what they were looking at, as long as it gives you the feeling that they had when they looked at it. Um, very minimal detail usually. Um, if there's any man-made things like buildings or carts or anything, they'll always be very small because the Eastern world, as opposed to us, consider man to be insignificant in nature. Whereas, you know, in our paintings, usually man is big. <laughs> and, you know, buildings are big, but not in ancient Chinese. Um, a chop, you'll see chops on some of these. A chop is, it's a red stamp that's been put on there. And it's very, again very different from western world because that's somebody's signature whoever buys that painting stamps their chop right on the front of the painting because they feel like they own the painting they're part of the painting now so their chop is beautiful and adds to the painting so when we look at some of these they'll have multiple chops all over sometimes they put the chop smack dab in the middle of the painting too and i'm like wow now that's different, you know, when we buy a painting, we don't whip out a pen and write our name <laughs> across the center of it. That's that's just, you know, different. Uh, they have very uh, asymmetrical balance, which again is very different from the Western world. We're, we're all about symmetry usually, and even asymmetry, it's this kind of thing. Um, diagonal balance goes this way, and it's asymmetrical and they'll balance negative space with positive space. Doo -doo -doo -doo. Now, uh, the landscape in China, very different <laughs> from here. I mean, look at these mountains. They're just, whoa, just whew, straight up and down. And those will show up in, in the uh, paintings here in a minute. Um, these little houseboats are I find very interesting. <laughs> They're two-story houseboats. Hmm. Pretty cool. They must not get much wind. That's all I can say. Um, like I said, the mountains are very dynamic, and that's part of the um, balance when they do it, is to show how dynamic the landscape is. Here's one, a painting. And I, there's one chop right there. I know there's some other chops in here. I just can't see them. But you can see they're going for the definite uh, dynamic mountain. And you can see pretty much the diagonal balance in this one. 
this is part of a scroll, there's more to this painting. <coughs> now, if you go to the uh, Nelson, you can see scroll after scroll after scroll. They've got a huge Chinese exhibit there. Very pretty. In fact, I've included a whole catalog there for you from uh, the Nelson. Um, the architecture, because nature is all important, they want the architecture to repeat nature. So they have a lot of curving up like it's growing. See the, the roofs, that's where you get all that fun uh, curviness on the roofs. And the textures too, they're trying to make it look more like wood, trees. Okay, now the scrolls, like I said, they have lots of them at the Nelson. The scrolls are very long and they're usually rice paper. And they're extremely, the whole scene will be very horizontal, but it won't be just one scene. They'll have a nice long landscape and then they'll have a little story. They'll write a little story or something about, you know, this one. Then they'll paint another one and they'll roll up that one. And they keep doing that for a long time. <laughs> so they're very, very long. So when you go, if you go to the Nelson Art Gallery, you'll see, you know, my goodness, that's only one section. <laughs> you know, it's really long. Um, and they'll have, like I said, multiple images. Now, back in the day, <laughs> in the ancient times, uh, if you went over to a Chinese person's house and they liked you, they'd break out the scrolls after dinner and you could look at the best parts. And they'd show you just the best parts. Now, if they didn't like it that much, they'd show you some of it. Might not be the best parts. If they didn't like it, you didn't get to see the scrolls. Okay, you were, no scrolls for you. If, you know, you were there and they decided you weren't worthy. But it's, it kind of took the place of, you know, entertainment for them. <laughs> and they keep, they keep the scrolls, these are scrolls, uh, in boxes. And nicely, they label them nicely. Those are labels. Or it could stay, say a story, too. But you can see there's a chop right there on that scroll. And these are just parts of scrolls right here. And then, like I said, this is part of a scroll. Now, you can see uh, there's a few deer down here. This has some color. This. Uh, you can see it's just very pale. This is, whoever painted this was a master painter. And there's two chops on that one. So at least two people bought this. Probably more. There's probably more. This is, and this is just a close up of the, the little deer. And then the color. Very, very pale. And there's the other one again. You can see there's a boat. Right there. <laughs> and the keep the house. On the left. On oh, the yeah, yeah. There, I forgot about the house. Yeah. You see that they want those to be very insignificant and just don't hardly see them. See, and there's houses right here. And this one, hidden. This one, I think, is part of that other one there. The, so, like I said, these are segments. That one there is one stand. And see the buildings kind of disappear into the background here because they, they have the little curvies on them. So it goes. And here's another one. See, look how big that stamp is. I've seen some that the stamp is right in. <laughs> And the chop is their, their name or initials. And it's always printed in red. Now what this is, you know, what the, this is a little story or explains what's going on in here. And you see, these are buildings, but they've made them so pale and the same color as the rocks. You can barely tell them there. <coughs> and here's a, a little guy. And here's a building hidden back in here. So you can see the diagonal balance is really strong in this one. And then, of course, that's a good story. Like 
chopped them and they covered them. Lost in the translation. Okay, now we'll go on to wall hangings. Uh, they're, like I said before, they're on silk. They're very vertical. Um, this is another difference between us and them. The way they mount their wall hangings. The way we mount things is we usually have it like this. It's got small, big, usually even on the side or it could be even, 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 but this is always bigger. This is a complete reverse of what they do, and I'll show you them when we get to some of the pictures and why they do that. And these hang on the wall, and they usually have a decorative rope. Yeah, here's, here's some. Now, this, see how this is mounted? Small here, large there. That's because this is supposed to represent a heaven. This is supposed to represent earth. This is supposed to represent the underworld. <laughs> and, or hell, if you want to call it that. Um, so they, this should always be small in their mind. And that's why they mount it like that. Which I think is funny that we do it the opposite. <laughs> I don't know what that says about us. So here's here's some. You can see they're they're usually very vertical. This one looks like it's been cut to me, but maybe it has not Here's some. See there's there's a chop, there's a chop, there's a chop, <laughs> here's a chop over here. So these are these are cut off by the hand. The internet doesn't usually give you the full image because that's copyright infringement. But again, nature, it's all about nature. And, you know, a little story. Here's a chop there. Here's, see, here's one just sticking in the mountain. Going down here in the corner. Lots of chops. Okay. Now, besides landscapes, they do do animals and flowers and things like that. Um, and here's just, a, look at all the chops on this one. This was a popular painting. <laughs> I mean, everybody wanted this one. <laughs> and this is just sheep or goats. Um, this one's got two that I can see. And just a little. But it, uh, again, they, they usually make the animals very stylized. Not so much realist. I mean, they are and they aren't at the same time. And their stuff is really almost abstract. And we talked about abstract last week. Um, and then the flowers, very, very common in all of Chinese paintings. Flowers and birds and small animals and landscape. Um, bamboo, very common. Again, this, this one was a little popular. Two people bought this one and actually I think it was cut off by the internet. I think it was a couple more jobs. But I'm going to uh, show you some bamboo today and some other uh, uh, planty kind of things. And we'll be using black meat, which is what they use here. And the, where these white streaks are, those aren't mistakes. That's called flying white. That's They like that. They want that thing. And the leaves are grouped. And the leaves either go up these don't. They either go down or they go up. They don't go up and down on the same plane. Those are two different kinds of bamboo, I guess. But see, these go up, these go down. And you never, when I took Chinese painting, <laughs> we were never allowed to have them going up and down. Because she, she was Chinese and she said, absolutely no way. She said, they either go up or they go down. Now, the way the Chinese hold a paintbrush, and they still do, is very different than the way we do. And I have a paintbrush right there. It's two fingers in the front, 
two fingers in the back and you hold it steady with your thumb. And you move your wrist and your whole arm. And we'll be doing it here in just a minute. Um, and when we start painting our, there's a specific order to paint things. And they're very, you know, adamant. You do it in the right order or it's wrong. And, you know, it's not done properly and you gotta keep doing it. So the first thing you do is the stalk on the bamboo. Then you do the joints. Then you do the branch, and then the leaves are always last. And then I'll show you, there's a specific way to make the leaves too. Okay, let's do a quick comparison and then we will get on to our little painting. Um, Eastern world, they use asymmetrical diagonal balance. Nature is more important than man. Realism is not important. They want to capture the atmosphere of the moon. Colors limited and less is more in their opinion. Uh, Western world, that would be us. We like symmetrical balance, we do. Um, our stuff is usually somewhat man-centered. Even if we're doing a landscape, uh, if there's people in it, they'll be prominent, they'll show up. Uh, realism for many a long time, <laughs> really long time. Um, realism was what everybody wanted. They wanted to have a realistic portrait of, you know, Elodie there for to, you know, before cameras were invented, um, to record things. And most of the time, a lot of the paintings were recording things, you know, recording uh, stories from the Bible, recording, you know, people, important people, recording what their fancy house looked like. You know, it was all record. Um, not so much in the Eastern world. Yeah, they were just recording, you know, how they felt about that particular scene or that kind of animal. And they were just wanting it to you to experience what they did. Okay. So did they, did they not ever have any like commissioned family photos or portraits? <laughs> um, if they had people in them, they were usually small, but they, they would do like paintings of like the emperor or somebody like that, where it could be bigger, but they're very cartoon-like. Um, realism, like I said, was not that important. And if you ever look at any ancient Chinese paintings of people, they're very cartoony. And, and that's fine, that, that was their style. Now the uh, current painters, I don't really know too many of them, I do know this one right here. Um, her name is Wang Yani and she was a, a prodigy. But you can see she's using mostly black with a, just a little bit of color. And these were, or she started painting, I think she painted this when she was five. Ooh, yeah. And the monkeys, and all this kind of thing she was painting when she was three years old. Yeah, <laughs> everybody's like, wow, really? Yes, yeah, she was a prodigy and, and she's still around and she still paints. Um, but her father gave her a paintbrush, he was an artist, gave her a paintbrush when she was like two years old and gave her some paper and she started painting monkeys, what she started with, just out of her head. And so in the beginning, you said um, children weren't allowed to use color until they were like in their 20s or 30s. Right. And that one, she this did it at three. Is, well, this is modern time. Okay, that's what I was going to ask. Yeah. There's Ancient, a complete difference between. Yeah, ancient ancient time, that was it. They still, though, because I've had some um, Chinese children in my classes, they still want you not to give them a lot of color. And that's, you know. Her, her color, those are those are, uh, chops, is still fairly limited. I mean, this one she's got this red and black and white. And this one, it's red, black, and white, and I don't know what it is, tan colors. Just limited palettes is what they still want the kids using. But, you know, since her father was an artist, and he probably thought, well, she's already mastered 
probably stuff by the time she's five, she should be able to do whatever she wants. I think she has. <laughs> okay. Okay. Well, that's the end of this portion of the show. <laughs> and then we will uh, go on to the making of things. And I want to thank you all for listening so attentively. And uh, hope you come next month. We're going to be talking about creativity. Thank you for coming.